I am so thrilled to be here. Thank you very much for having me. So this talk is called Configuration as Code of Jenkins for Kubernetes. My name is Nikolai Grasholt. I am a DevOps consultant. I work for Efficode, previously Pragma. I help our customers with Jenkins and I do um, Docker and Kubernetes trainings and I'm a certified Kubernetes administrator. And I absolutely love uh, good documentation, examples, and proof of concepts and creating those. Uh, and when I say love, that's not an overstatement because most of, or all of what I'm gonna show you here today is actually stuff that I have created uh, in my spare time. Um, and I have opened my DMs on Twitter. Uh, so please be nice. But if you want to talk about uh, Docker or Kubernetes or uh, Jenkins and configuration as code, then please, um, just uh, send me a message. Please don't make it uh, help desky uh, questions, but uh, all right. Um, about this talk, don't panic. Uh, some of it is going to look um, a bit complex, but uh, so the complex part was creating the examples uh, and uh, figuring out uh, how to do it. And uh, luckily for you, I have already made all the examples and you're going to get all the examples. Uh, so you can also just sit back and relax. You don't have to take notes off of the slides. Uh, there is a repository that you will get afterwards. You'll get the slides afterwards. Um, so yeah, just uh, enjoy the show. Um, great. So uh, story time. So my story starts with Kubernetes because Kubernetes is uh, the most interesting thing in the world. And of course I want to get involved with it. So I wanted, uh, I had a love for uh, Docker. So Kubernetes came naturally to me uh, afterwards. So Docker for containers and Kubernetes for container orchestration. And I wanted to become a certified Kubernetes administrator because I wanted to work with this. And uh, so the customers would hire me to do their Kubernetes. Um, so I wanted to practice Kubernetes and become better at it. So I came up with a project because I'm a very hands-on person. And I thought I love Counter-Strike, so why not uh, figure out how to uh, manage Counter-Strike servers on Kubernetes. So I did my initial commit uh, almost two years ago. Well, uh, actually a bit over two years ago, the, the 3rd of uh, April. And um, a month later, I passed the uh, certified Kubernetes administrator exam. And that was nice. Uh, but I want to continue working on this project. Um, I also had a job. I have a job, um, so I needed some help with this project to get this going. So I hired the nice butler, Jenkins, running in Docker. I started creating my jobs for my workflows uh, by clicking around in the UI, but that quickly became tedious to have backups of. So I created my jobs as code, I converted them, and afterwards, so I was still backing up my Jenkins home folder. Um, so I configured my Jenkins with configuration as code, and lastly, I installed it with Helm into Kubernetes. So I had everything running in Kubernetes and could manage it in the same place. Um, I'm going to assume you have some knowledge with Docker. I'm not gonna dive into those parts. Uh, all of the snippets and all of the code I'm running is in the companion repository that you uh, get access to. And this is the part we'll focus on. So um, going from Jenkins and Docker with jobs configured as click to jobs configured as code having our Jenkins configured as code and then installing it with Helm in Kubernetes and seeing that in the end, when we have our Jenkins configured as code and our jobs configured as code, it's actually super easy to get running in Kubernetes. So the agenda in three pieces, configuring jobs as code, configuring Jenkins as code and running our awesome Jenkins in Kubernetes in the end. So step one, configuring our jobs as code. So, why do we want to do this? Well, we want the easy reconfiguration, right? We don't want to have to, uh, if we lose our Jenkins instance, then we have to click around in the UI and recreate our jobs. It would be nice if we just had the specifications and could just load them into Jenkins. Our backups become lighter as well because we don't take copies of our job folders um, with all of our content in it. We just take a copy of the configuration of our job. And lastly, I have my configuration under version control so I can see who changed what, when, and from which value. So I have the traceability of who's making changes to my workflows. So how do I do this? Well, there's two ways. 
I can use job DSL, it's tried and true. We've known how to do it for years. A lot of uh, Jenkins plugins that extend the jobs have native DSL. Um, so it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a great way of configuring your jobs as code. There's also the declarative or scripted pipelines. Those are the future. Ooh, there's a poll. Interesting. Um, yes, I do. Um, so uh, declarative or scripted pipelines. Um, the future, they can resume on master restart. They, uh, the uh, declarative pipeline has a job, has a DSL, um, which makes it easy to use uh, a lot of different plugins. And the scripted pipelines are in Groovy. So if you want to do something that isn't natively supported in the plugins, or you want to do something uh, highly customized, then you can use the scripted pipelines instead. You can also use a script block for the declarative pipelines, um, but uh, consider if you're using the right tool for the right problem. I'm going to use job DSL for this because it turns out I can do an instant conversion of my job configured as click into a job configured as code. It's a little thing I came up with, it's super cool. So a job in job DSL. I want my actual pipeline in a job DSL spec. I want a seat job that knows about my job DSL and I wanna add the seat job to Jenkins rather than add my job to Jenkins. Uh, and it gets smart, I promise. So the way I create this job, I create a new file, call it some jobdsl.groovy. I write the jobdsl specification. I'm just going to assume for now that writing jobdsl is trivial. Um, and then I publish it to my internal Git somewhere so Jenkins can get it afterwards. A jobdsl could look like this. So I have a job specification. It has a single step. In my step, it echoes, hello world. After creating my job, I want to create my seat job. So that's how I make Jenkins aware of my job in job DSL. So I create a new freestyle job from the Jenkins UI. I add a job DSL build step for the job DSL I just created. I save the seat job and then I run it. And then Jenkins will create the job that I have in my um, uh, job DSL specification. So uh, just to recap, I have my pipeline in a job DSL. I create a seat job for my job DSL, and then I tell Jenkins about my seat job. Um, did I skip something? No, I didn't. Excellent. Sorry about that. So the reason this gets smart is because, so I have my single job as job DSL, and I have my seat job, but I can actually create a number of seat jobs for a number of jobs and then have a single seat job, that a super seat job that reads all of the seat jobs. So I get my entire platform into Jenkins, but I'm only telling Jenkins about a single of these jobs. So I'm only configuring one job through the UI. This is very nice. So the way I get into job DSL, uh, so job DSL has this very cool feature called the configure block. And in my opinion, the coolest feature, except for being Groovy code as well. Um, and from the documentation, so the configure block, it says it's used inside the job DSL to give direct access to the underlying XML of the Jenkins config XML. All right, so the configure block looks like this. So the intention of it is for um, to use job DSL for plugins that doesn't yet have a native DSL support. So either, you for the git uh, plugin, you will have these nice commands. So git, it has a remote. Um, so they have implemented that in the git plugin. Otherwise, if I want to do more advanced stuff, I might have to use a configure block for writing directly to the XML. Um, this is cool for two reasons. So first of all, it says something about a Jenkins config XML. So um, it sounds like my job is actually already there configured as in, in uh, as code somewhere. And secondly, uh, the configure block will give me access to interact with this XML. All right. So did you know that a Jenkins job is available as XML through the slash config XML endpoint? So this is what it looked like for, this is what it looks like for a job uh, that has a single uh, task that says, hello uh, world. I can actually go to the UI and go to my job 
and on the config XML endpoint, get a specification of my job. So this is pretty cool. Um, so I'm gonna show you now that a Jenkins job is already XML. I'm gonna show you uh, the job DSL to wrap this XML, and I'm gonna show you the bootstrapping so we can just see that everything works. All right, so I told you about this uh, example repository that you're going to get. It has five folders. Uh, the first one is the basic Jenkins in Docker. So that'll just give you, get you running with the first example. And you'll be seeing me just copying and pasting a lot of stuff from this example repository. And that's because that's how easy for you it is to uh, use it as well. So I have a pre-configured Jenkins. It just has an admin user and it has the job DSL plugin because uh, this exercise is about job DSL. So it has the user admin admin. Of course, I want to create a new job. Call it Nikolai. And that's a freestyle project. And I want to add a single build step. I want to execute shell and I want to echo, hello world. Great, and just run it so we see that it works. Excellent, it ran and it printed echo hello world or it printed hello world. So in the URL, I can write the config XML and I actually get the specification for this job. Awesome. Okay, so I wanted to convert this to job DSL. So in the job DSL folder, I have a readme. The readme tells me how to do the demo. It says that I should get the config XML for a job and that I should follow the steps in the XML to job DSL template groovy file. So I'm going to jump in there. The step says, make a copy of the template file. I'm going to do that. and replace the XML job here part with the contents of your config XML. You get that from the config XML endpoint and you use the view source. I'm gonna use the view source to get the XML, copying and paste it into this job configuration. Excellent. And then it says remove the header of the XML document. I'm going to delete that and replace backslashes and dollar signs with backslashes or escape them. Um, so this is a simple job, so it doesn't have any backslashes or dollar signs, but this is something I ran into when I did it on my own time. And lastly, give the job another name that replaced me job DSL. So I'm just going to call that Nikolai in job DSL. And congratulations, you have now converted your job to job DSL. All right. Now I need to add this to Jenkins. So I create a new job. I call that a seed job. It's a freestyle project. I add a build step. It's, I want it to process job DSLs. I want to use the provided DSL script and I'm going to paste the job DSL that I just wrote. I save the job. I run it and then after a couple of seconds, it'll have run. It says it generated an item, Nikolai and job DSL. You can run that and while it runs, we can look at the configuration. If I can hit it, oh no. Sorry about that. I have a screen sharing bar in the top of my screen. Can you see my screen again? Yes, we can. Excellent. Apologies for that. So looking at the configuration, I have my single uh, shell step. It says echo hello world. And when I have run the job, it says echo hello world. Great. So this is how easy it is to convert your uh, point and click job to job DSL. Um, and you can do this for any job because I didn't make any assumptions about what my job could do. I just got the config XML, pasted it into the uh, job DSL wrapper, 
and then the configure block did the entire translation and I had my job as job GSL. Awesome. So, uh, is this cheating? Well, no. Uh, I'm, I changed my workflow, so if I have to change my job now, I'm still doing it through the UI, but I'm persisting changes with the generated config XML through Git. So I have my job configuration under version control and I get my easy reconfiguration with the super seat job. So this is not cheating, this is awesome. All right, my next steps, converting this to a declarative or scripted pipeline for the complete S code flow. Um, so right now I am making changes by clicking through the UI and that gets tedious still. And uh, my wrapped job DSL is not that easy to read, um, but this is a great first step for just getting my point and click job as code. So the next step, now I have all of my jobs as code, so I want my Jenkins as code as well. So my dream, um, the example platform I'm building now, is that I have a number of jobs as code. I have my basic pipeline, I have my config file pipeline, and I have my Google Cloud SDK pipeline. I have those into Jenkins. I want to configure Jenkins with an SSH key because I'm pulling my pipelines from some Git repository somewhere where they are in version control. I also want to add some configurations files for Jenkins, uh, like an auth JSON file for the Google Cloud SDK. And lastly, I want my things to run in Kubernetes. So, um, getting our Jenkins to configuration as code. So why would I want this as configurations code? Well, um, like before, I want it to be trivial to recreate my last configuration. I want it to be easy to create test setups and just being able to spin up a Jenkins with a certain configuration makes it great for containers because I can just spin one up at will. Uh, it also makes my backups lighter so I don't have to uh, take backups of my Jenkins home folder anymore. I can just back up my configuration. And I have my configuration under version control so I can see who makes which changes to the configuration of Jenkins. So how do I do this? Well, that's a little harder than simply converting your jobs or wrapping your jobs in job DSL. So I have to do one plugin sort of or one setting at a time. Um, but I can't do it, it's an iterative approach. So I can, um, I can just do it one plugin or one setting at a time and then more and more have my Jenkins configured as code and then in the end when I'm done, uh, I can switch the backup strategy. So I'm just saving my Jenkins YAML, the configuration of my Jenkins configuration as code instead of my entire Jenkins home folder. Um, there's a ton of great examples on the official configuration as code plugin website, sorry, a GitHub repository. They have a folder with demos that shows you how to configure a lot of different plugins that you might have installed on your Jenkins. This is a very great resource for helping you doing that. So, um, so what's my first step for getting my Jenkins configuration uh, as code in Docker? Well, I need the Jenkins configuration as code plugin. And uh, do I want to install this manually through the UI? No, of course not. I want to use pre-installing. So I create three files. One file called plugins.txt. It has the configuration as code, ID of the configuration as code plugin, and it has the version that I'm going to use. I then create a Jenkins YAML, which is the config file for the configuration as code plugin. Under the Jenkins, I add a system message. I tell the system message to be configured as code. So this is a nice sanity check for me to see when has my configuration actually been read. Thirdly, I create a Docker file for building my custom uh, Jenkins Docker image with my plugins. And these are just basic commands from the official documentation. So first of all, I copy in my plugins txt file. I run the install plugins script with my plugins file. So that's gonna tell the script to install the configuration as code plugin. Secondly, I copy in the configuration of Jenkins and 
I tell Jenkins through an environment variable where to find the configuration. And this is just from the official documentation. There's no magic going on. And it is that simple. So I'm going to show you starting the simplest Jenkins configuration as code in Docker. So I have this here. I have my Docker file that I showed you before. Uh, the only thing I have added here is that I'm skipping the setup wizard. It's in the examples, so you can check that on your own time. I have the plugin configuration as code, and I have my basic Jenkins configuration as code configuration file. I have built this Docker image, and now I'm going to run it. So stop the other one and go into the right folder. And after a couple of seconds, Jenkins will be running again. tells me to unlock Jenkins. All right, so I get the initial password from the log files of the Dara container. I don't want to install any plugins and I just want to continue as admin. Not now. Start using Jenkins and it's configured as code. Awesome. So that was that simple. Just to see that my Jenkins works, I can create a new job. You see, it only has the freestyle project because I don't have any plugins here. It's also a very, very limited number of build steps. I can do my echo hello world and run it. So I actually have a working running Jenkins that is configured as code. Cool. So caveats for doing this. Well, um, when you are just installing your uh, plugins, uh, pre-installing your plugins, and you are mounting in a Jenkins uh, home folder backup, you will be overriding the configuration as code plugin. So if you're not starting entirely from scratch, you will need to add the configuration as code plugin through uh, the UI, through your managed plugins. Secondly, I am mounting in the Jenkins, uh, to the configuration, into the Jenkins home folder. So if I were to mount on a backup on the location, then it wouldn't know where to look for the file. So you would have to mount those elsewhere. So step one, starting my Docker with uh, Jenkins configuration as code. So what's step two? Well, I still have this uh, clicking part of adding my super seat job to Jenkins. So I might wanna script that I can add a job to Jenkins by just adding it to the Jenkins YAML file. So under jobs, I can add scripts and under scripts, I can add the job DSL. So this is similar to the job DSL you saw before. It's just been indented to fit with the YAML style. This means that I can actually add a supersede groovy job to my Jenkins YAML. And then the job will be there when Jenkins starts up so here I have my supersede job. It checks out some code from uh, a Git repository. That will be the job DSL um, companion repository for the example uh, project. It uses credentials to check this out and it runs a single step. It's a DSL step and the DSL step reads the external job DSL of the repository and it uses wildcards. So it just reads all of the job DSL and creates all of the jobs. It will also delete jobs if I make changes to the Git repository and run it again. Missing pieces for this. Well, I am starting to check out code from a Git repository using SSH. So I'm going to need an SSH key. I configure my Jenkins configuration as code YAML as well 
to add this key on startup because I don't want to click through the UI to configure Jenkins. And this means I also need to add the credentials binding plugin. I don't want to hard code secrets into my configuration either. So I am wrapping the uh, an environment variable in brackets and dollar sign. And this means when I'm running my uh, Jenkins, when I'm starting my Jenkins and it reads the configuration, it'll read this value from the environment. So if I put this environment variable into my container that I'm running, Jenkins will read the environment variable and use that to configure its credentials. So that's super cool. Um, and I'm actually also missing a couple more because I am writing job DSL. So I need the job DSL plugin. I am using a Git repository. So I'll need the Git plugin. I'm using SSH. So I'll need the SSH plugin. And I'm going to be reading pipelines, uh, scripted pipeline jobs. So I need uh, a pipeline plugin or uh, the workflow aggregator, which is kind of a meta wrapper around a lot of, um, around a lot of pipeline plugins. So um, this just means that I get the latest version of a lot of pipeline plugins in production. You should figure out which of the plugins you need and of course pin the versions of those. So you don't simply rely on latest. Great, so demo time. I'm going to start a Jenkins with the super seat job bootstrapped. So in the Jcask folder, I have an advanced folder. There is a demo folder and there is a couple of uh, configurations and a couple of shell scripts that run Jenkins with these configurations. The difference between the uh, scripts out here and the scripts in the demo folder is that in the configuration, I'm checking out with SSH. I can do this because my credentials point to a service account or bot user on my GitHub that I have added to the repositories. Um, when uh, you are running this, you will be doing it checking out with HTTP, but then that made uh, actually uh, supplying the credentials uh, a bit redundant. So now you have both examples. So uh, in the HTTP examples, you can do it without credentials. In the SSH example, you will have to supply your own credentials for your own um, repository. All right, so for the Jenkins bootstrap, you can see from the slides, I have the credentials configured. I have my job configured. For the demo, I'm using script security false, so I don't want to go through the commands I'm running in my seed job and allow those one at a time. In production, you should use script security. And I have my run script, and my run script simply provides the environment variable with my SSH key for the container when it's running. So I can CD into the advanced example and into the demo example and use the run script. And Jenkins is going to start up. And I have my Jenkins configured as code and I have my super seed job added to my Jenkins automatically. That's awesome. And I can run my super seed job and after it's run, it will have read the job DSL from the job DSL companion repository. It's a folder with job DSL. It has the super seed job and it has a number of other seed jobs as well. It, had, it has added the auth job, the basic job and the G cloud job. And I know that after running the basic example, I'm able to run the basic pipeline. And this is going to check out the, uh, the project from the configuration as code Jenkins K8 is pipeline companion repository. It's gonna run my build shell script, which will print that it's building and success. Great. So my Jenkins is working 
and I didn't do a lot of work to add all of these jobs. I just bootstrapped my super seed job and then it loaded all of my jobs in my project. This is awesome. Um, great. So uh, caveats for pre-installing plugins. It's recommended that you create a base image with the plugins that you need um, and that you don't simply keep the uh, plugins TXT because at a later time, the plugins might not be available in the version that you need. So I told you that I have been uh, working on this project for uh, almost like, yeah, well over exactly two years. And um, when I put it down for half a year and picked it up half a year later and tried to build my Jenkins again, I thought, well, great, I have it as code, so that's just going to work. And then some of the old plugins that I was using uh, had been removed from the, uh, from the, from the, public repositories, so I actually couldn't build with the oldest plugins again. The good part is that it forced me to uh, update all of my plugins to latest, but um, it's not a good thing if you expect the plugins to be around and actually be able to use them in those old versions. Secondly, so I told you about the, the version of the workflow aggregator plugin that's just going to key to, it is just going to load the latest of a number of pipeline plugins. So you should figure out which of those you need and then pin the version of those. Thirdly, there is the uh, custom WA packager project um, that you can also see for different ways of packaging Jenkins with libraries and extending it with plugins um, to, uh, to make it easier to reproduce the actual Jenkins that, uh, that you're gonna be, that you, you're gonna be building. So more missing pieces. Well, um, you saw that I actually had to run the super seed job once and I had to do that manually and I don't like manual work. So can we automate that? Well, uh, we can give it a trigger. We can just tell it to run every two minutes. That's great because then uh, at most uh, two minutes after my Jenkins is uh, put to live, um, it will run the super seed job and the super seed job is going to load all of the jobs on my platform. Awesome. Um, it also means, however, that my super seed job will be running every two minutes and that feels like a bit of overhead. But um, then, so I have, my, I have my super seed job, I have added it to Jenkins with uh, clicking. Now I have added it to Jenkins with the configuration as code. And thirdly, I have told it to run every two minutes. So you saw that I had the super seed job in the, um, in, the, uh, in the job DSL repository as well. And that's because a seed job can actually bootstrap itself. So I have one version of my super seed job that I have added to my Jenkins configuration it has the trigger timer, so that tells it to run every two minutes. But then I have the super seed job in my repository with seed jobs without the trigger. So I know that it's going to run at most two minutes after, then it's gonna override itself and then it's not gonna run anymore. Then I can add, could add another trigger to it in the, in, the, in the repository so that it would run whenever I make changes to the seed jobs. But this makes it super cool because then I know that it will only run once and at most two minutes after Jenkins has been, uh, has been started. So the third part, we have all of, of our jobs as code. We have our Jenkins as code and now we want it to run in Kubernetes and we're going to be using Helm to make that super easy. So why do I want it running in Kubernetes in the first place apart from Kubernetes being awesome? Well, a unified way of managing my applications. So I told you that I want to have my Counter-Strike servers running in Kubernetes. So why not also just have my tooling around it running in Kubernetes? Secondly, it allows me to scale with Kubernetes build agents. So instead of adding these build agents to Jenkins and just have them idling around, I could actually use them inside my Kubernetes cluster, add Jenkins to my Kubernetes cluster. And then whenever I need to build something, it'll just be using the compute power that I already have running.
And I can also use custom images for this. So if my build agents need a specific compiler or version of a tool, I add it to the container, which serves as the template for the Kubernetes build agents. And then my jobs will be running inside of this container. And I needed to do stuff with the Google Cloud. So I added the G Cloud SDK, which I'm going to show you. Um, caveats with this. So I was just able to add environment files to my container when I ran it with the Docker run command. I'm not able to do it in the same way um, when I run it in Kubernetes. So what do we do in Kubernetes when we want to configure our application? Well, we use config maps and we use secrets. I would still not like to um, to have my uh, to have my secrets, have my passwords, have my SSH keys as code. So I would really like to still be able to provide them at runtime from the command line. So I'm going to show you installing our awesome Jenkins with Helm 3. I'm going to show you supplying the secrets for a Helm 3 chart. And I'm going to show you the custom agent images that I'm using. So prerequisites for this. A uh, CD, I want to go up. I want to go into the Kubernetes folder with the Kubernetes example. Uh, the Jenkins Extra uh, left as an exercise for the reader. You can run that on your own time and see how the uh, you can configure the config file provider plugin to supply configuration files for a job uh, in a pipeline. So I have a readme that tells me how to do the demo. It tells me prerequisites. I need to have a Helm installed. So I have a Helm in version three, 3.1.2. I need to add the stable repository for Helm. This is also part of the quick start guide. And afterwards I can search the repository and I can see, oh no, I can see that I'm finding a stable Jenkins help chart. And I should have access to a Kubernetes cluster. So I can do a Kubernetes get, oh sorry, kube control get notes. And I have access. That is awesome as well. I have my Helm SH. So that's a helper script for doing the Helm installation. I have my install script and I have my uninstall script. The install script creates my two secrets. They created from files. So rather than cutting the contents of a file into an environment variable that I give to my container, I just create a secret from the command line from a file. So this is my SSH key, this is my config file, and then I'm running the Helm helper script. And this is so cool because I am supplying by using set the reference to the secrets um, into a list of environment variables for the master container, which means that I, I could have gone into my value YAML and I could have supplied these as a list. But then if I wanted to do it later from some CI, I would have to use SED or some other tool to edit my value YAML file. And in this way, I'm actually able to do it just from the command line. I think that's kind of cool. The values file I'm using for this deployment looks like this. I have my master. I configure it to install a number of plugins. A number of these you've seen before. A number of these are just a quality of life plugins. So job config history, what changed? Uh, the being able to rebuild a job, timestamping output, wonderful plugins. I specify a specific tag for the Jenkins master that I want to run. And then I supply my Jenkins configuration as code um, configuration. So this is not the uh, config file. This is not the Jenkins YAML file. This is the configuration from the Jenkins YAML file, but for the Helm template. So I enable JCASC, I provide a single config script, and then I provide my Jenkins YAML. And you'll see, this is what I told you in the beginning, that um, 
when you have your Jenkins configured as code, it's super easy to get running in uh, Kubernetes with Helm because you just paste your entire configuration, you indent it, then you're ready to go. So I told you about the trigger. I want it to be run uh, at most two minutes after. This trigger will be overwritten. It's just here to auto trigger one build. Awesome. Lastly, I'm configuring the agent image. So these are the agents uh, that I want Jenkins to spawn and for you to use for building. Um, and I'll get back to those. So I will run the install script. It's gonna create two secrets. It's gonna do the Helm install. And with the output from the uh, Helm install. So I'm just going to copy and paste these things. This is the getting the secret from the, um, for the admin account. This is uh, exporting the pod name. And then I'm port forwarding to the Jenkins instance running in the cloud so that I can access it from my computer. Um, what does it say here? Oh, didn't it work? Sometimes the copy pasting an entire line with a windowed terminal is a bit funny. Okay, that worked. And I'm just copy pasting stuff from the, uh, from the documentation. I'm not making any of this up. So my local host is running, it has an admin account. It has the, uh, I'm using the password that I was provided by the output. There is the super seat job. And so it should trigger in a second. But I just quickly wanna show you the configuration of it while it hasn't overwritten itself. So you, uh, great. So you can see here, I have the trigger that it will build um, every two minutes. So now I have a build queued. It's gonna take a bit longer now that I have it running in Kubernetes with the Kubernetes plugin because it needs to spawn these pods that will run my build agents in containers for, uh, for executing my build inside it. So while it's running and starting pods, I want to look at the agent image I'm actually using. I have a Docker file. I'm using the Jenkins inbound agent. So this is the new name for the uh, Jenkins JNLP slave um, images. Uh, this is a, a nicer name. And uh, the, it will allow the, uh, the, the Jenkins agent to communicate back and forth with the, uh, with the Jenkins master. Then I am installing the Google Cloud SDK. Again, there's nothing magical. It's taken from the official documentation translated into a Docker file. I have uh, put the, uh, the command line things after a run command and I've removed the sudos because I don't need that when I'm running as root. And in the end, I'm switching to the Jenkins user again. I have a build script. Um, so you will want to push it to your own repository. Um, I give it a name, I give it a tag. So this is just pushed publicly. That made it a lot easier when I'm going to download it because it'll just pull from the um, from Docker Hub. I specify the name of the image and I specify the version that I want to run. And see here in the background that no executors are running. So my super seed job has run and I'm now able to start all of my pipelines. And they should be done in a second or well, a couple of seconds, depending on how, how fast it takes for, um, for the pods to start. So the ones we didn't look at, the uh, auth pipeline, it's what, yeah. So what you'll see here is actually it, uh, not really interesting because um, this will just be referencing a uh, Jenkins file. It'll tell me, it needs to check out the pipeline script from a uh, source code. It needs to check it out from Git. And then it tells me where it is in the repository. So this is the auth and 
job DSL, there's a Git repository, and then there's a script path. The interesting part is actually in the script on the pipeline repository, which is the monorepo project example. So I could have done this at, as three different repositories. I chose to do this one, because then I only had to create one repository. The auth has a Jenkins file, and it will check out this repository from source code. It's gonna run a hello world, and then it's going to echo inside a config file provider clause that this is where I would authenticate my session, and it just cats the uh, auth JSON file. So uh, now that it's run, we can see the output. So there's a sanity check, hello world, and it prints my uh, session file. It says secret, I'm a password file. And looking at the resources, auth JSON, this is the password file, password file. So this is what I put into the um, into the secret when I created it with cube control and which uh, Jenkins then read when it started up and added as the auth JSON, um, the auth JSON config file from the Jenkins auth JSON environment variable, which I could then reference with the uh, auth JSON JSON ID. This is very practical if you need to authenticate a uh, a um, Google Cloud, for example. So an example of using the Google Cloud, uh, a tiny example nonetheless. Uh, I have my sanity check, I have my um, config file provider as well, and then I just do a G Cloud version just to check that the G Cloud SDK is actually installed into my into my uh, Jenkins agent. And when I'm looking at the output, I have my hello world, I have my secret file, and I have the version of the different components of the G Cloud SDK that I've installed. I'm doing something on the Google Cloud, create machines, etc. And in the end, I clean up the VMs. Um, another cool trick, put it in a try catch, have a finally clause that cleans up because then if you make an error, it still deletes your resources on the platform. You get all these examples. So to wrap up, I wanted to do a lot with Kubernetes. So I had an interesting journey that took two years and then uh, last weekend, I had a colleague write me, hey man, are you still hosting CSGO servers in Kubernetes? And I wasn't entirely done with the platform that I wanted to build, um, but he told me that the free server broke and I thought, well, all right, I have uh, it running so I can start it up. And 15 minutes later, I was running CSGO servers on Kubernetes. And uh, as far as I'm told, they had a great match for a couple of hours. So, thank you. Yeah, thank and you. Questions. Thank you very much for your great uh, presentation. We've got a number of questions. We answered some of them uh, offline, uh, but we still have uh, eight questions uh, to discuss. So let's try to go through them and maybe we great. will a bit overrun the meeting. So the first question is: uh, Where can I get job DSL conversation wrapper scripts? That is a great question. So um, you uh, can get it on this repository. So figure out configuration as code, Jenkins K8S. And uh, you can, I can uh, paste the link in uh, Zoom. So this is the repository that you'll get access to. And also inside job DSL, there is a readme and it has a detailed guide which takes you to a, a GitLab repository I created, which has a lot more detail uh, about what actually happens in the script. Um, and uh, there's also uh, some things about verification and yes, go nuts. And please uh, tell me if it works or does not. <laughs> um, I made it 10 months ago, but apparently, um, yeah, some of it still runs. 
Thank you. Uh, so the next question, uh, rather than reading secrets uh, from environment variables, is it possible to configure the secret from a vault or other secret store in the configuration plugin? Yes. So that is an excellent question. Um, if I was to get, so I haven't tried this out, but you will still need to tell Jenkins how to talk to vault. So you need to give Jenkins a token in the first place which means that these credentials, it's actually still great for giving your Jenkins your vault token. And then in your job, you will be using your vault token to communicate with vault and get the SSH key, which you will then be using for Git. Um, or uh, the, uh, the, the auth file that you would be using for, um, for Google. Yeah, I also shared the uh, link uh, to official documentation uh, on the JCASC page because we have a special documentation page which shows uh, all the various modes of managing credentials with JCASC. So if you want, you can take a look at that. And yeah, let's proceed to the next question. Uh, do you update your base image with pre-installed plugins when the plugins updates available uh, or do you update them by user interface? Um, both. So I would want to I would want to test that the plugins work, uh, and if I have a Jenkins running, I can easily update them through the UI and see that my Jenkins is still running and my jobs are still running. And then, in order to persist my change, I would add it to the uh, the plugins txt, and I would build a new base image, which I would then put in my my internal uh, Docker registry somewhere. Thank you. Uh, so the next question is about uh, secrets again. Do you actually put uh, environment variables in, in for secrets or is there a better way I probably don't want to have all my secrets as environment variables on the master either? I guess sure. Similar. So, uh, well, first of all, if you have uh, your Jenkins in the credentials, then you have them in the credential store on your master. So if you have access to the master, you can jump through different hoops to still get the credentials. But uh, I would uh, like to store my credentials in vault and then just have a vault token on the master and then on runtime manage my secrets in the different jobs. So uh, sure. I can I can see that uh, it uh, it looks like it blows up if you add all of your secrets at env as environment variables, but um, when you have them as credentials, you technically still have them on the master available. You just have to uh, know where to find them. Thank you. Let's go next. Um, is it possible to keep the build history and other data like artifacts or logs uh, use Jenkins configuration as code? Um, maybe you want to take that, Oleg. Um, okay. You can uh, get you can take the logs from the from the container it's running. If you have artifacts from your builds that you want to keep, you should put them in an artifact manager. So Jenkins is not a database. Um, yeah. That's uh, one of the ways. Another way is, uh, is to actually uh, pass volume uh, to your uh, container uh, use Jenkins master so that you can uh, store Jenkins home on a volume. Uh, for future, we have uh, a lot of pluggable storage stories. It's already uh, possible to do it for logs. Uh, we created a, a log uh, storage for pipeline and you can use, for example, FluentD and uh, AWS CloudWatch or Elasticsearch. And uh, yeah, for Artifact Manager, as Nikolai said, we have an integration with S3. Uh, and in general, uh, we intend to, uh, to keep working on that. Uh, there is a public Jenkins roadmap, which has been uh, developed at the moment, and any feedback will be useful. But in principle, just pass uh, volume uh, with Jenkins home, and it will work, uh, and it will persist the data between uh, restarts. Obviously, make sure you also make backups using Quellera or other services and Mark Jenkinson presented how to do that at the last meetup. Yes, yeah, so just to add, uh, in the uh, example repository that you'll get under the basic Jenkins in Docker, uh, I was using the fresh Jenkins and I was mounting a volume onto the Jenkins home. 
So this is the name of the volume. This is the path inside the container. Uh, and that meant that I could prepare it up front so I could install the job DSL plugin and it would also persist my, uh, my jobs uh, through restarts. Okay, thank you. And yeah, we'll try to process all phony and publish responses after that call. So yeah, I'm personally in parallel and hopefully we'll publish all this information soon. Yes. Okay. So we have, uh, well, actually a uh, number of questions increases. So if everybody has 10 extra minutes, we can keep answering questions. Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, let's do that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the next question is, do you have any experience with HashiCorp uh, Vault as a source of truth for secrets? No. I have a tiny bit of experience with, uh, with running it, but uh, I haven't had it uh, running uh, in production. And uh, and work with the tooling around that. Yeah, uh, but but I would love to talk about Vault uh, offline, but probably not at a, a Jenkins. Uh, yeah, right. And also, if you're interested, you can uh, join uh, Jenkins configuration as called Gitter Chat, because uh, HashiCorp Vault plugin is currently maintained uh, by JCast maintainers. So if you have any questions, just join the chat and uh, other contributors will be able to answer these questions. Okay. And next question. How does it work with uh, Jenkins Kubernetes operator? Um, I have no idea. Jenkins operator. Yeah, uh, there is a, a separate project uh, which has been started something like one year and a half ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would expect it works uh, really well with it. So it says it has support for the configuration as code. And um, my, uh, I didn't really do anything special with my jobs going from uh, a normal Jenkins to a Jenkins configuration as code. So I would expect you to just like uh, dump your uh, config uh, Jenkins YAML in there and that it would run out of the box. Something like that. And for so the, the reason I'm not using a an operator is that I don't need the lifecycle management of my Jenkins. So doing the, but I, I manage the lifecycle myself. I do the upgrades. Um, so the operator can help you with that. Um, and then I expect uh, uh, Kubernetes to do the rest. So if my Jenkins crashes, then Kubernetes will restart it. And then hopefully, if I've configured it correctly, it's going to bootstrap itself. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And hopefully we'll have a special uh, online meetup for Jenkins Kubernetes separator. Uh, it's yet to be announced, but yeah, we are working on it. Yes, and also uh, we talked about maybe doing a more extensive uh, job DSL uh, meetup at uh, some point. A plus one. <laughs> and yeah, if anyone has any other topics, please use uh, the feedback form. Uh, I shared it in the chat. So if you would like to request presentations or maybe if you would like to share something on your own, just let us know. Uh, we will be happy to do that. Okay, uh, let's finish q &A. Mm, Yeah, uh, so next question is, why is the presenter including uh, Google Cloud SDK in the agent Docker image? Is it because uh, Kubernetes is running on JK? No, not at all. Uh, that was just because I am running my Kubernetes project on the, uh, I, I'm running my uh, Counter-Strike servers on uh, the Google uh, Kubernetes engine. So I needed to interact with Google Cloud. So uh, for, uh, for testing, uh, like spinning up a new GKE cluster or uh, configuring firewall settings. And I wanted Jenkins to be able to do that for me. So that's why I'm adding the, uh, the, the SDK so that I can from the command line, but from a Jenkins job, interact with the Google Cloud. It has nothing to do with where Jenkins is running. It's, uh, this is actually running on, uh, on the new uh, beta uh, Kubernetes from Sivo, uh, the, the Cube 100 um, uh, beta program. Mm -hmm. So the only thing Google here is uh, is just, it, yeah, it could be any uh, tool that I uh, installed 
I just had this lying around and I'm actually using it. Um, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Okay, uh, so uh, next questions. Uh, what do you recommend to mask passwords in the logs as mask passwords plugin has a security warning uh, now uh, uh, for some time? I don't know. I would expect you to, if you use the credentials plugin, then by default, if you try to print the credentials, it will mask them. Maybe Oleg? Yeah, as a former maintainer of mask passwords plugin, uh, credentials binding plugin indeed uh, tries to mask passwords by default. Uh, mask passwords at some point it had the integration with Jenkins pipeline and can be used in some cases. So the security warning point is uh, relatively low priority. But uh, yeah, if somebody wants to contribute, please do so. Unfortunately, I had to step down as a plugin maintainer in 2018. So there is some technical debt. And uh, yeah, the plugin is uh, looking for new maintainers. So credentials binding plugin is your answer. Yeah, okay. credentials binding. Yeah. OK, next question. Uh, how do you manage access control for users with JCASC? Do you define this in your Jenkins YAML as well? Uh, yes, I do. So I am a one person a developer army in my project. So I just have uh, the default admin user. But uh, you could add users in your uh, Jenkins configuration as code YAML as well. But what you'd really want to do is just hook it up with your LDAP and manage your users from there, but then manage the LDAP integration from the uh, from the configuration as code YAML. So that when your Jenkins starts up fresh, you can just log in with your users and groups. Right, and if you want to manage authorization, uh, all major Jenkins plugins for authorization also support the groups. So for example, LDAP, Active Directory, um, and uh, there are authorization management engines like uh, role strategy or matrix authorization or for example in github uh, authorization which again can be configured uh, in order to pass specific access uh, configuration to the Jenkins instance and there are demos in jcast plugin we show how to do that okay so just three questions left Yes. <laughs> With uh, the Kubernetes agents, how does one handle uh, uh, drone pipeline steps in Docker container again? Does uh, this need uh, some extra config uh, or just works and spawns them in Kubernetes? Um, I'm actually not sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, so uh, you. I think that when you create your. Um, mm -hmm. So when I have my. Um, this was the job DSL. When I have my scripted pipeline, mm -hmm. I'm telling it where to run. So because I didn't specify any agents, it's just going to run on the default agent. But I would be able to, in different steps, uh, to specify which nodes it should actually be running on. Mm -hmm. So if you create, so uh, in my, um, so the Helm chart is a bit basic. You have uh, an agent, um, but if you add several types of uh, pod templates to your Kubernetes configuration uh, in Jenkins, then you can specify in your pipeline, which parts of your pipeline should run on which agents. Right, and um, you, again, you can refer to the previous presentation by Martin Jackson. He presented how to use uh, Kubernetes plugin, which can provision agents on demand uh, in Kubernetes. And there are other plugins uh, which can provision site containers or if you run Jenkins in a port and uh, many other options. So yeah, you can provision uh, them depending on your needs in Kubernetes. Okay. Um, yeah. So let's try. Uh, so in one of last iterations, uh, Nikolai, you tried to skip uh, Jenkins setup wizard, but uh, Jenkins still prompted for admin credentials and plugin installation. So yes. what did happen? I think uh, what went wrong mm -hmm. is that I was running the 
uh, I was running um, this. Uh, so uh, Oleg uh, told me about this cool feature that you can skip um, that you can skip the setup wizard. Uh, so I added this to the Docker file, and then I rebuilt my Docker image and I called it Jcask job. Um, because I wouldn't want to break things that I had working in case this didn't work. And then it totally worked. And then I didn't go back to my readme and update the name of the newly builded image. So I'm actually running the very first image I created when I did the demo for Oleg and he told me, hey, this is a cool thing you should try out. So uh, it was just, uh, just the demo gods giving me a hard time. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Mm, so, if we have 100 of jobs, it will be hard to define uh, everything in one YAML file. Uh, is it possible uh, to define each job in a separate YAML file? Yes. Thank you for that question. Um, so, in the in the companion repository called JobDSL, I have a, a JobDSL folder, and I have my super seed job. Mm -hmm. um, and this loads all of the job DSL in this job DSL folder. In each of these folders, I have a job DSL script, which loads a single Jenkins file. And I could have several uh, job DSL scripts in this folder, and I could have several folders. So you can put each of your, um, yeah, so for your hundreds of jobs, so for each job, you will have a Jenkins file and each of those Jenkins files will just have a uh, one a pipeline job which reads it from the um, from your source code management and uh, and loads it with the script path and also like so this is called basic Jenkins file in the uh, auth example it's called auth Jenkins file most of the time, if you have it in different um, repositories, it will just be called Jenkins file and be in the root of your repository. But I did it as a mono repo because I thought I'm going to have three projects that are almost identical. So um, I'll just put it in one repository for, for mm -hmm. making it simpler. Okay. Yeah, thanks. I'll say if you use uh, just JCASC YAMLs, it's possible to specify a folder as a YAML configuration for us. And if you do so, uh, JCASC plugin will uh, all load all YAMLs and it also has logic to merge them. This logic is probably not like deep merge, uh, but uh, it still does have a job for many common cases. Okay, and finally the last question. Uh, would you accept downtime for master uh, during update or would you try to replicate the master and update them one by one? That's a good question. Uh, Oleg, maybe you want to start? Well, what do you uh, feel like? <laughs> uh, yeah, so it really depends on uh, your setup because yeah, if you have a cluster of multiple Jenkins masters, you can implement various things like uh, rolling upgrades, A-B testing for them. If you want, it's totally doable. No, there is no automation or framework for that right now. Well, um, in CloudBees, we offer some tools uh, for CloudBees Core and CloudBees CI products. Uh, but yeah, for open source, uh, it would require additional uh, scripting. Uh, so if uh, you want to do that, it's possible. Uh, if you just uh, rely on uh, uh, Jenkins by default, uh, then you would have to accept downtime. Right now, Jenkins doesn't have multi-tenancy. So we had a research project which we presented in 2018 at the Contributor Summit in Brussels, but right now you have to restart your instance in order to apply upgrades, whether it's configuration update or plugin update. But did you see how fast it was to start up a new Jenkins? <laughs> so uh, it should be fairly easy for you to uh, to test out the new version of plugins or test out the new version of Jenkins, take your configuration, move it to a different instance, spin it up, uh, click around in it, verify that it works to your needs, maybe add a couple of jobs to it and even run them. Um, 
if you want to if you want to verify it by that way and then when you're confident that the new version of Jenkins is good or the new version of the plugins are good then you simply apply the configuration on your production Jenkins and you spin it down you start it up and then it's going to be ready yeah um, uh, Jenkins start up time uh, mostly depends on the number of jobs on your instance and we have some uh, discussions about improving uh, job loading time. So, so stay tuned uh, for the new features. I have a cool trick where you limit the number of jobs on a Jenkins when it starts up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, uh, it's also possible to see the jobs. Uh, why not? Mm -hmm. So Great. And that's it. So thanks everyone for questions. Uh, again, we will try to process them. And thanks a lot for, to Nikolai for this presentation. It was really useful, uh, a lot of different cases. And uh, looking forward uh, to see what's next. So stay tuned uh, for the next Jenkins on Kubernetes meetups. Pleasure. Yeah. Thanks all. Mm -hmm. I'll stop the recording.